Hey YouTube, Lion Brew here today. Uh, I was going to show you my dry hopping of a session IPA, but I've just opened up the fermenter and I've got a beer pellicle. Now what a beer pellicle is, is it's when you get a, a wild yeast like infection, they call it, in, in your beer. So something I didn't intend to put in there has got into the fermenter. And what it does, it forms like this milky film on top and uh, also like you get little bubbles in it so where the CO2 is coming out of the beer when it's fermenting the film sort of envelops it and the bubbles get encased so you'll see bubbles in your pellicle and it looks it's kind of a bit yucky but um, if you're brewing a sour beer it's apparently a good thing um, obviously in this case I haven't done it intentionally, I've never actually had one before, in fact, so what they say is, uh, take a little sample, take a sip, see what it tastes like, could be a good sour infection, because a lot of beers nowadays are of, um, spontaneously inoculated with um, yeast, like, so it's a wild ale they call it, so it could be okay, but the only way to find out is to taste it, so that's what I'm going to do. So I need to take a gravity reading anyway. Let's have a, have a looky looky. <coughs> Got my hydrometer and uh, turkey baster all sanitised. Just give you a quick look. It's the pellicle. It's not even a massive one. Apparently, the longer you have a beer in a fermenter, like if if you are to have an infection, um, the pellet will form like a bit later. So this has been in the fermenter for about three weeks because I've not had the chance to actually check it. So that might be why I've never seen one before because I've I may have had, I've had infections before. But what you do now, you take the beer from below. Pellicle. Still got a little bit in there, but it smells like it should smell, like the session IPR brew, brewed. It's um nice and hoppy smelling. It's really clear, which is due to it being in the fermenter for so long. It might have a lower gravity. Than in, well, than intended because whatever the wild ingredient was, yeast, bacteria, whatever, could have eaten up the sugars in a different way than the yeast I put in. So let's have a look at this. One o eight. One o eight on the hydrometer, which. Um, if I check my notes, it's probably about where I wanted it. Now, let's uh, keep all these things separate. <coughs> well, the thing to do once you've... Um... Ooh, that's my turkey baster. I definitely need to clean that now. It's on the floor. Where all the shoes go? Um... Yeah, it smells alright. Very clear. Look at that. Shame about that top. But, um, give me a little sample. Yeah. Trying to not get the pellicle in my drink. That bit fits. Ooh. Splashy, splashy. Alright, so I'll just pour some off. I poured the pellicle bits out. Smell the amarillo, the orange, and the chinook. Tastes fine. Tastes nice. Hmm. What I think I'll do is 
I'll leave it for a bit more because hopefully the pentacle will drop down and I can bottle it that way without getting the pentacle in there. And um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bottle it up, I'll prime it a little bit less than I normally would with sugar just, just in case the bacteria is fermenting some extra stuff. We don't want any bottle bombs, but um, yeah, no harm done, I don't think. It may sour over time. So what you got to do with these kind of beers, some people chuck them. Um, because it's my first time with one, I'm going to use it as a learning experience. Um, I bottle it up and like, fridge it as, as soon as it's carved up, just put it in the fridge, cold as possible, and I will drink them as fast as I can. So. Good thing it's a session IPA. We have a couple. <laughs> Cheers. Hey DJ, give me a beat. It's the Lion Blue Show. Cook two. Do some gun and foraging stuff. Terrible raps. Like to subscribe and all that crap. <laughs>